What's up, everybody? I'm going to show you how BandLab works. Uh, it's an application and a uh, web-based music creation platform that we're going to use for doing virtual band and virtual choir stuff. Um, whether or not you have um, the choir or the band thing, it'll be able to be used here, and I'll be sending out those links as soon as you give me the go-ahead that you can play it or sing it to the best of your ability um, with the track that's been given to you already. Here we go. You're going to make an account. You're going to go through the process. You're going to download the app to your okay. phone. This is going to take you through the first method for uh, getting your assignment done. You're going to want to head over to the Google Drive folder that I put into your JAS dashboard. Um, and your, I'll just use this one as an example, um, the Pages button. When you click on that. It'll say link to the High Hopes Fan of Disco, or for course, it'll be the happier one. Um, it'll In your pages, it'll say happier. When we head here, it'll take us to this Google Drive folder. You're going to then have some options if you right-click it, such as download. I'm going to download. If you're on an iOS device or a tablet or an Android device, um, you'll have the option to download it as well. You'll just have to make sure you keep track of where you put it. Once you have that downloaded, you're going to head over to your BandLab account. Um, this one appears for me. It may not appear for you. You're going to go to New Project, Mix Editor, and you're going to Import Audio MIDI. You're going to grab that file that you downloaded. You may have to search it. You may have to hunt it down, but it's there somewhere on your device. Open, and then it pulls it in. Ta-da! This next method is going to take you through the second option for how we're going to get this project completed. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to send you a link or uh, an invite and it'll allow you to do this part. Here we go. Open and mix editor. It will bring it up. I'm going to delete this track um, because that was something from earlier. We're going to add a voice and microphone track. The drum machine track is for percussionists. Um, not for uh, not for anybody else. Voice and mic, everybody else. That's going to record your um, voice or your instrument. Um, all the other stuff is just extra. Once you're here, you're going to head down to source and make sure that everything is coming through. As I can tell, I'm hearing and seeing that level go up. That's great. Uh, I'm going to hit the, the monitoring button. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to hear what's going on inside of my machine. So what's coming through the microphone. If you don't want to hear monitoring, just unclick it. It works either way. The effects are really fun to play around with, but we don't want you using those for when you are uh, recording into the software. For our purposes, it'll make things sound kind of weird. But I do encourage you to play around with it because it sounds pretty cool in some places. All right. I've got my sheet music up. I've got my track named. I'm going to show you what it looks like and sounds like when you clip, when the microphone level is too loud, and then I'm going to um, turn it down some so that it's not so uh, uh, strong and clipping. So as you can see here, that those levels are super duper high compared to these levels. We want all the levels with the choir and the band to be relatively small because I can always boost that uh, later later on, but we can't take away the clipping sound after the fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this track or hit the undo button. And I'm going to turn down my microphone a lot. My voice is going to get a lot softer. And um, I think that should be a little bit better. Here it comes. That's a good example of what might happen 
Um, you want to make sure you have uh, the right track listed to clip. So I'm going to hit undo. So now I've still got the track down. Uh, make sure this is highlighted gray, light gray instead of dark gray. That means you're on it. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. <laughs> So that was a decent rep. I'm not thrilled with all of it. I missed a couple uh, phrase markers, took some breaths when I shouldn't have. Um, so I'd probably do that again if I was going to keep it. I drag and, drag and pull around this thing to eliminate some of the space. Do the best you can with that. You can do it at the beginning too. As you can tell, my levels are clean and low in the mix. Um, I can always boost those later. Uh, so that's where you want to be with it. You're gonna take a lot of time trying to record and get the best sound out of the, out of your, out of yourself, um, into the program, and that's okay. It took me a long time to get good at recording, um, and and being perfect like this. So uh, you'll you'll be fine. No worries. Okay, guys, this, I'm gonna go through the uh, percussion parts for this. Um, how you're gonna take care of that process? Uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to be in our file. We're going to add a track. We're going to head over to instruments, not a uh, drum machine, not, don't be tempted by that, instruments. When you click on this button, the little piano icon, it's going to give you a bunch of instruments to be able to record with. We're going to go to drum pads, and we're going to make some 808s happen. Oh yeah. If you look at my screen and where I am uh, see these things, these things have different sounds. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, practicing. O is my hi-hat, F is my kind of cool sound I like, and then S is my bass drum. Okay, this is not what your music says to do, I'm just giving you an example of how it's going to work. Um, the last part of this, before you start recording, um, your percussion part is going to be going up to Show Hide Automation. Click that on, click the red button for record. What that's going to do is it's going to allow you to input the MIDI um, mapping and all that. Uh, it's really technical stuff. Just don't worry about it. Just make sure those two things are clicked. And then we're going to hit go. Here we go. And there's your, um, <laughs> there's your percussion part. It's going to work the same way uh, as when you go to do um, exporting and all that stuff. You just export the file as a, a stem and send it to me. Make sure you record your actual percussion part and not just do what I just did because though that's very fun and you should play around with that. It's not what I'm looking for. We're trying to make a band song. And I guess we could do like a remix of it and sub out the percussion parts, but that might get really confusing with what people are assigned to. So let's just stick to what's on the page first, and then we can mess around with it later. Enjoy. Once you're finished checking your levels, you feel good about your recording, you're then going to come up here to save and hit the save button. That saves it to the cloud. There are a few ways uh, that we can get this project done, first of which is by you uh, exporting, downloading, file download, um, and do the tracks. And what happens is, is you get two separate... Um, recording it's downloading the stems that's what we call it in the professional world the stems each stem is a different audio file 
And so you don't need to send me the high hopes arranged by Kamuv band recording. You can just send me the your part. And what I'll do is I'll drag and drop it into my um, device. Once you download it, you'll download it to your device somewhere, and then you'll send it to me, either through email or through the Google Drive. This next method is going to take you through if we decide to go through the cloud-based collaboration version. With everybody doing this, there'll be lots of inputs and entries. Um, there are revisions that will appear. Make sure you're on the latest revision. It'll be like the most northmost uh, version of this. I'm not even sure if I can see it from back here. I'll show you real quick. So on the iOS device, they may show you something um, like this, where you see um, all these different versions. Make sure you're on the northmost version. That's the one that's going to have the most takes on it. Um, now I don't have to go down and hunt through these takes and find it. Okay. Uh, for instance, the very first one that we made um, was all the way back here. Right? There's all these different versions. This is the latest one that I just did. Okay. All right, guys. I hope that helps. Uh, good luck. It's going to be super fun to do. Talk to you soon. Bye.